Have you ever looked at your credit score and thought, the fuck? If that sounds like you, I'm gonna explain eight reasons why your credit score sucks. Let's go. Hey everybody, Brandon Boyd with The Brandon Boyd Show. Thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video if you find it entertaining or helpful. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notifications for alerts. I really appreciate all of your support so far. And it's time to check in on a topic that, honestly, we haven't really covered a ton on this channel. We've mentioned it here and there in some other videos, but we've had a lot of comments on the channel regarding credit scores. Why is my credit score bad? What makes up a credit score? What can I do to improve my credit score? What credit score do I need for this card or that card? So today I want to talk about eight reasons your credit score may not be as good as you want it to be and why it may just suck altogether. It is worth noting that this is not an exhaustive list of every single component that could impact your credit score negatively, but these are the most common things that are seen out there. And it's also something that you can pull your credit report and see if any of the things that we're gonna mention impact you directly. So if you're ready to go on the ride with me, I say we just jump right into it and let's get going. Let's do it. First, let's start with the big one. It makes up about a third of your overall credit score and that is your payment history. A late payment can stick around on your credit score for up to seven years, which can be scary, right? So we wanna make sure we make payments on time as it is a huge component to your credit score. So even if you missed a loan payment four or five years ago, that could still be dragging down your credit score. So don't be surprised if your credit score turns out to be lower, if that's the case. It is better than not paying at all. If you go without making a payment, that's even worse. They at least want to see that you're making an attempt to pay even if it is late, but missing payments altogether is not a good thing. You don't want to do that. One big thing you want to avoid is having accounts charged off. And charged off means that the issuer basically has given up on trying to collect the payment from you and they've basically written it off. That's another way to say it as well. You really, really don't want that. And this leads to accounts going to collections. Same thing. It all funnels back into late payment history, no payment history, having things charged off. Those can really damage your overall credit. Long story short, make your payments on time and whatever you do, don't just not pay things and hope that they go away. I'm not gonna be ignored. Because it will come back to bite you later on when you get a car loan or if you're gonna get a mortgage two or three years down the road and you think, oh, they've forgotten about that loan payment. I never made that payment. It'll come back to bite you because when they pull your credit report, it may show that account as charged off or written off and that could keep you from getting loans and mortgages in the future. So make sure you're making your payments and making them on time. Thanks for the tip. The second biggest component that could be impacting your credit score negatively is credit utilization. And essentially what this means is that you may be carrying too high of a balance in relation to the amount of available credit that you have. Let me give just a quick basic example. Let's say you have a credit card that has a credit limit of $10,000. If you are running a statement balance of $9,500 in a given month and you only have $10,000 total available to you, when the credit card company reports that to the credit bureau, it negatively impacts your score because a new credit issuer may look at that and say, wow, they're using 95% of their available credit. They're kind of pushing it to the limit and that impacts your score negatively. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this can rectify itself pretty quickly. So if you paid off that large balance, the next time the credit card company reports that to the credit bureau, your score will improve drastically. So it is something that can be fixed quickly, but if you're in a situation where you're getting a mortgage or you're getting a car loan, it's something that at that particular period in time, it could impact your credit negatively and keep you from getting something that you need at that moment. So just be very aware of your overall credit utilization. It's recommended that you really only use about 30% of your total credit limit. If you ever hear people say, yeah, I maxed out my card, that's not a good thing. That's gonna impact their credit negatively because they have used 100% of their available credit. And when that gets reported to the credit bureau, they are gonna get dinged because they are maxing out their credit utilization. There's one really interesting quirk that's worth mentioning with credit utilization as well. Let's say you have a credit card that you have a balance on of $5,000 and you decide to close that credit card yet you still have a $5,000 balance. Think about what that does to your credit utilization. You have $0 in available credit yet you owe $5,000 your credit utilization will be through the roof and your score will be impacted greatly by that. So think about that before you close accounts, make sure your balances are closed out before you close any cards or accounts. 
The third factor that could impact your credit score negatively is your overall credit history. Now this one's pretty simple. Credit history just shows how long you've had lines of credit open and how long have you been able to keep payments going over a specific period of time. The longer you have the credit open and continue to make on-time payments, the less of a risk that you are for a credit issuer. Now one thing to keep in mind though, we get this question a lot is, should I close an old credit card? So let me give you an example of what closing an old credit card could do to your credit report. So let's say that you opened up three credit cards five years ago, okay? And you went the next five years and only opened up a couple more cards, but most of your cards were opened up earlier and that's when you began your official credit history. Well, think about this, what if you closed those older cards, you don't really use them anymore, you've got these other new shiny cards that you wanna use, let's just get rid of those old cards, we don't use them anymore. Really bad idea because now you don't have a five year credit history, you have a one or two year credit history with your new shiny cards. So basically you've shortened your overall credit history and that impacts your credit score negatively. So just because you don't use a card, don't go and close it, think about your overall credit history and how that could be impacted by closing that one credit card. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? Especially if it's a no annual fee card, just keep it around. There's no reason to really get rid of it. Put it in a sock drawer or something, put it somewhere else where you're not using it, but there's no need to get rid of the card or cancel it if it shortens your overall credit history. Number four is applying to too many credit cards or loans within a short period of time. New credit issuers may look at that and say, wow, they're being very aggressive with their new lines of credit. It basically just raises a red flag for them to say, why? Why are you doing this? Don't apply for something unless you're really serious about doing it and keep your applications to a minimum and spread them out over time to make sure you don't get dinged for having too many requests within a short period. This one's really interesting and something a lot of people don't think about, but at number five is your overall credit mix. So if you only have credit cards or if you only have loans, that can impact your credit score. So try to have a good mix of credit with a long credit history and make your payments on time and that will help you out in the long run. Number six, are what I call the nuclear bombs to your credit report and can really impact your credit for a long time in a very negative way. And that is filing for bankruptcy or having your home foreclosed. Filing for bankruptcy stays on your credit report for seven years seven. and can do a ton of damage. This is probably the biggest red flag that new credit issuers look for. And even on some loan applications, you'll see that. Have you ever filed for bankruptcy? There's a reason why, because if they see that box is checked, they're gonna think, okay, major red flag here, this could be a big problem. The same red flags apply to home foreclosures, and new credit issuers will look at that and say, wow, they made a commitment to make a payment on a long-term loan on a mortgage, and they weren't able to follow through. Again, it's about making a promise to pay money back and not doing it. It's a huge red flag, and try to avoid these at all costs. Number seven, I wanna talk about judgments. And no, I'm not talking about judging you in particular for your credit score. I'm talking about judgments that could be levied against you for not paying your bills on time. Let me give you just a quick example. Let's say you have someone working on your home and you owe that contractor money and you never pay them. They may go to court and force you to pay that bill. And you'll wanna pay that bill because a paid judgment is a lot better than a non-paid judgment. So even though you may be upset that you have to pay the bill, Pay it because even though both impact your credit score negatively, a paid bill is better than a non-paid bill. Thanks for the advice. One really important thing to keep in mind with judgments is you may have judgments levied against you that you're not even aware of. Someone may or may not have served a letter to you to request that you pay a particular bill. So make sure you pay your bills on time again and don't let things slip through the cracks and hope that they go away. This is again another example of something that can come back and bite you that you thought went away but many years later it could come back to get you when you apply for a car loan or mortgage or what have you. So keep that in mind. And finally at number eight, we're gonna talk about identity theft or having a mixed credit file. So identity theft is pretty straightforward and I've got a video coming out fairly soon where I'm gonna talk about my own personal experience with identity theft. It ain't fun. Make sure you pull your credit report at least once a year to make sure that the accounts that are on there are actually yours, that's very important. And in terms of having a mixed credit file, what that means is that you may have the same name as somebody else, and for whatever reason, your credit files may be mixed together completely unintentionally. Nobody had any nefarious ideas of stealing your identity or anything, but it could be mixed up and you wanna get that cleared up as quickly as possible, especially if you have a good credit history 
and you've gotten mixed up with somebody else that may have a negative credit history. So in short, make sure you pull your credit report to make sure everything is yours for better or for worse. I know sometimes it can be scary to look at your credit report and also just make sure that it's not getting mixed up with anybody else's stuff and that keeps a clean slate for you so you can move forward and proceed with your financial goals. Before we wrap up, I do wanna let you know that it is federal law that you get to pull your credit report one time every year for free at annualcreditreport.com. You can go on there and see your credit report. It's not gonna give you a credit score. I mean, you can certainly look into that if you want to, but the biggest thing is you wanna look at the report itself and make sure everything is accurate. It seems to me like there's 50 or 100 or 200 credit apps out there that monitor your credit and give you your score. I've used Credit Karma before. I personally use annualcreditreport.com. They aren't sponsoring this video or anything. That's just what I personally use. In terms of identity theft protection, I do use Xander Insurance Identity Theft Protection. Again, they're not a sponsor to this video, but I've used it for me and my family for a number of years, and they helped me out quite a bit whenever I had my identity stolen because trust me, it's a huge headache, and it's great to have a good team on your side. But what I would encourage you to do is just find somebody that has a reputation in the business to help protect your identity because it is a monster to deal with and a huge pain in the butt. You need somebody on your side that's gonna be able to help you out. Let me know down in the comments, did any of the items that I mentioned in this video really hit home for you in a good way or a bad way you can let us know we're pretty friendly down in the comments but I'm always curious to hear what others have to say especially if you've had poor credit in the past and you have found ways to improve it we'd love to hear about that down in the comments because I think that could help everybody out we want to hear what's working for people out there if you enjoyed this video don't forget to be awesome give me a big thumbs up on the video subscribe to the channel hit the bell notifications for alerts and I'm really glad I got to put this video together it's been on my to-do list for a long time I'm really glad that I finally got around to it, and I hope you really found it helpful. I know it covered a lot of information, but hopefully it was helpful at the end of the day. When you click on the Brandon Boyd Show, it is going to be time to check in on the latest in points and miles, credit cards, money, finance, and everything in between, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. I'll see you soon.